these are my disclosures uh, uh, related to, none of them are really, really related to this talk. In terms of my approach disclosures, I was trained as a lateral surgeon, uh, as a resident, uh, primarily in, at the Mayo as a fellow. I did posterior with some lateral and I've taken up DA about five years in the practice. So I'm probably about a decade into doing it at this point. And I still use all three approaches in my, in my practice today. So I'm just going to try to set the land, uh, lay the land a bit for our, our speakers. Uh, we all know total hip is a very effective treatment for OA. Uh, we're up to over 60,000 cases a year uh, done uh, in Canada with a significant cost to the healthcare uh, system. We all know there's a variety of surgical approaches, and I would imagine most of us uh, on the webinar tonight were trained in, in one or the other of the, the more traditional approaches, be that posterior or lateral as residents, and that's usually where we got our grounding in, in total hips. Uh, but more and more you're seeing other approaches and in particular today we're going to be discussing the anterior approach and its relationship to where it might fit in your practice and the key question is does it matter what approach you do in in 2022 and really should you consider change changing your current practice i made this slide probably about five or six years ago when i was uh, doing a talk on surgical approaches and it, show, it shows you sort of the spectrum of of, of how approaches were at that time there's a difference between Canada and international. Internationally, there's a little bit more of a split between uh, lateral and posterior with a slight edge towards posterior. And DA was occupying about 10% of the, of, the, of the pie. In Canada, as often, we, we adopt things a little bit slower than some other, program, other uh, countries. And so DA is much less uh, was at the time in, in Canada. Uh, and lateral was actually the dominant approach as many of the training programs sort of uh, have focused on that uh, over the years. Now, if you look over time, though, across multiple countries, this is just example from the most recent data from the Australian Joint Replacement Registry, anterior and other approaches such as the, these novel approaches are taking up more and more of the uh, segment of the population that are getting total hips. So in this data, the, the anterior approach occupies 28% of the, of the data from 2021. Now, just quickly, I think we're all probably familiar with these approaches, but just to review what we're talking about, the posterior approach is not a new thing. It's been popularized for a number of years, originally by Moore in the 1950s. Your incision is going to be basically something like this, uh, centered over the trochanter and curving posteriorly. Your intervals is going to involve splitting uh, G-max and coming then down onto the short external rotators, either taking them all off or uh, trying to maintain piriformis, depending on, on the approach that you're using. Your at-risk structure being the static nerve is relatively close proximity on this approach. The advantages of this exposure, it gives very extensile exposure for both acetabulum and femur, and it does spare the abductors. Historically, the, the knocks against it would be the dislocation rate, and historically any from 1% to 5%, and the possibility of a static nerve palsy or injury associated with, uh, with the surgery. Now, looking at the dislocation rate, certainly we have had multiple complications that have shown that that does improve with a good posterior capsular repair, and certainly uh, other implant issues such as head size can play a role in that. For the lateral approach, this originally came out of Europe in the 1980s. Uh, for your intervals, your incision is generally more centered over the trochanter with no, no curve posteriorly. It's more in line with the femur. Uh, you're going to split through tensor fascia lata and then some varying degree of split of the abductors, be that a 50-50 split or an anterior one-third, post, uh, posterior two-thirds uh, split, depending on surgeon preference. This also provides very uh, extensile exposure uh, and does uh, boast a very low dose dislocation rate, relatively more independent of head size than the posterior approach. The disadvantages, though, is it does take down the abductors and abductor issues can be anywhere from 4 to 20% patients and the potential for palsies, be that superior gluteal nerve or femoral to exist. With regards to the anterior approach, it's not a new surgical approach. It's just become more popular recently to, to do total hips. Uh, your interval involves an incision, usually curving slightly laterally uh, just off of the SIS. Uh, it is an internervous intermuscular plane between sartorius TFL, which brings you down fairly quickly onto the capsule. And then you can proceed from that point with, uh, with the total hip. If you go across the literature or, or dare to search Google and go on the internet, you're going to see a lot of things about the anterior approach written. Is it, is it more muscle sparing? Does this show uh, more early restoration of function? Is it a better dislocation rate? And this is some of what our speakers are going to touch on today. We'll also look at the potential disadvantages. Is there a higher risk of, of femur fractures or femoral complications? More wound issues, lateral femoral cutaneous neuropraxias? Is it just harder to do and more technically demanding? 
And, and does it actually cost more in your operating room, even if it saves the overall hospital stay? You are potentially, are you gonna add fluoro in? Are you gonna buy a whole new table to do this procedure? All of these things are things that you might consider if you're potentially switching approaches. So I think it can be daunting when you think I might be changing my table, I might add fluoro into a procedure that I already know how to do. I'm gonna use a new interval, maybe new reamers, maybe new brooches and potentially a new implant. And so when you think about that, that can be something that's a bit scary to, to a surgeon to, to go into. So in the talks tonight, as you listen to our speakers, I want you to think about some things when you listen to the comparison of the approaches. Think about the outcomes, be those both early and late. Think about the costs uh, to your hospital in terms of the operating room costs as well as the hospital stay. Think about what complication rates and is it different than what you're going to experience with your current approach. And then the concept of learning curve, and I will point out, as I'm sure um, Raj might, might agree, there's, it's not really a nice gentle curve. It's more of a rocky mountain going up and down as you learn anything in, in orthopedics. So we'll hear about his experience uh, in teaching and learning this. So our overall objective is to try to give you a bit of a summary of current data comparing DA, posterior and lateral approaches, looking at the hospital, staff, proms and complications. We're breaking that down into three different talks tonight. Uh, Lisa, Dr. Lisa Howard's gonna try to present the case for maintaining the status quo, meaning what you've been trained to do is what you should persevere with, and, and that's what you do well, and you should continue doing that. Raj uh, Sharma from Calgary is gonna present the case for potentially considering change if you haven't gone down this road, and specifically with regards to the direct anterior approach. And we'll touch on uh, through the discussion, how to transition if this is something you want to do with new technology, new protocols, or a new approach. And then uh, Dr. Demko and Sylvester out of uh, Kelowna are going to try to present some real world experience to all of you about how they successfully transitioned to a new approach and uh, find out how you might do that in a non academic center. Uh, so I think that's where I'm going to stop in terms of introducing things. And uh, Lisa, I'm going to hand it over to you to give our first talk about uh, maintaining the status quo. Thanks, Raj. 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 Th